Welcome to the next section of our course using generative AI for software automation testing. And in this section, we are going to talk about how we can build our own visual testing with generative AI. You might have heard some visual testing tools like Apply Tools or Eggplant, which does the visual comparison of the screenshots of the applications or the visual comparisons of the user interface of the application and does the matching and also performing a click operation or getting the text out of it and all done using the tools like Apply Tools. And those are the enterprise grade tools but for few testing that we do for our automation testing we might require a capability for performing a visual comparison of a page for instance if every single cosmetic details of the page is matching correctly or not so if we wanted to do these kind of operation then we can build our own visual testing with the power of generative ai we also saw the power of generative AI's APIs while trying to perform entire page object model code validation with the page scores which we were passing in by scraping the web page and passing it to the Gen AI and it could able to resolve it for us and it could able to give the responses something like this as you remember. So everything was just working fine and that was something that we saw in our last section of this particular course. And we also saw the requirement of the APIs which is very very important while we need to perform the operation so we also saw how we can set up the APIs and how we can get the API endpoints and also the secret of the API and pass it in our csharp.net code so we saw everything in our last section but in this section we are going to go a level further to understand how we can perform a visual testing with the generative AI we all know that the large language models has support for vision APIs as well. So for instance, GPT 4.0 or GPT 4.0 mini and GPT 4 turbo have all got the vision capabilities, meaning these models can take the images and answer the question about them. So we can pass these images as either an URL or a base 64 encoded image and it will give you the responses based on what kind of image it is and based on the question that you really ask to it. So if you go to the OpenAI platform and then if you just go and see there is something called as the vision capability where you can see that this is the GPT-4 uh, Turbo, Turbo Mini uh, and uh, all these models that I have got has got the ability to identify and recognize the image and it can give you the responses out from it. And you can also use these responses to perform the operation that you are intending to do. They also have got support for multiple image inputs, which means now we can use this option to perform comparison of a specific image if you wanted to do it. So that's the power of the multiple image inputs as well. You can do that comparison and you can do it. You can pass these images either as a low or high fidelity image based on the resolution that you are trying to pass in. But you will notice that if you're going to be passing a low resolution image, you will be just spending around uh, 85 tokens for that. But if you're going to be sending a high resolution image, for instance, uh, if it's going to be like an higher pixel resolution, then you will be ending up spending higher tokens. So that is an example that they have given, like how you will be spending the tokens and the cost involved for a specific image that you are trying to send to the OpenAI's API. So those things are all described in here and like how the rate limiter works and how the cost is being calculated. But the idea is this, you have the ability to send an image to the API and then you can get the response out of the APIs to describe that image that you are looking for. Well, as I said, now we will discuss how will this vision support help us do visual testing in automation testing, especially for the Selenium automation testing or Playwright automation testing that we do most of the time. Well, the scenario is going to look something like this. What we are planning to do this time in this particular section is that we are going to have an application working state, just kind of like an image that we're going to be capturing. And then we're going to compare the, the image with the working state image of an application. Uh, maybe you can just consider this state as something like, uh, like a modified UI state or anything like that. So if you feel like if this particular UI may be different from the working state UI, then you're going to 
pass these two images to the vision API of the of the model that we have got and then we will see or analyze if both the pages has got any difference and if they are having any difference then just get me of all the differences that you have got so if they are not if they are matching then you just tell me uh, to execute the code because this just work fine but if they're not matching because there is some differences in them then just show me all the differences that this particular images has got within themselves so that is the thing that we are going to be seeing in this particular section and we'll see how the power of visions in the large language models with gen ai has the capability to get all the details that we are looking for in a much 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 easier fashion so we are going to use the same exact capability that we saw in our last section where we were using a dotnet code to pass the data right to the api and get the responses back and then parse the responses based on the need of our requirement in this lecture we are going to talk about the scenario that we are going to be automating in this particular section so the idea is this let's say if i just go to our eaapp.sami.com website and if i see this is the first initial state of the page like a logged out state like currently i have not even logged in but once i log in the page actually changes as you know so if i just say username as admin and password as password you will notice that i get the hello admin here and there is a log off a link here and i also see there is this employee details and the manage user so there are a, a menu list change and there is a login operation being changed uh, and there is this operation happening at the moment right these are the changes that we can visually see so these changes may not be in a first instance encountered immediately but if we could use these kinds of api for instance the visual api or the vision api or the vision based tools like the apply tools or the eggplant tool these tools it does the visual comparison for every single image that you have got and that's exactly what we're going to be using the power of the gen ai and we are also going to get what has changed that is the really important thing it's not just going to compare to screenshot and going to give you that there is a pixel change but we can also get the changes which has happened between these two images so let's say i'm going to get an screenshot of this particular image so i'm gonna get the screenshot uh, and you can see that i have got the screenshot over here i'm gonna copy this screenshot i'm gonna go to the chat gpt i'm gonna say compare two images and i'm gonna paste the first image over here and i'm gonna get one more uh, image which is the logged out stitch uh, image right so I'm gonna go take this image as well over here. Uh, and I'm gonna copy that image. I'm gonna paste it over here. So I have got, uh, to be honest, two images over here. Now, this is the multi-image operation that I just showed you in our last lecture. So we are gonna use these two images and then we're gonna compare how these uh, images are going to be uh, different and what are those differences that's what i really wanted to see so i'm gonna ask the prompt here i'm gonna say compare two images and get me the uh, differences in a json format the reason why i wanted to get it in a json format is because we are going to be writing in a, in a c sharp dotnet code we, we might need to deserialize the responses and then we might need to get the value like how we are looking for. So if I wanted to do all these kinds of operation, then it is always better in a programming world that we get a JSON response. That is the most acclaimed way of, uh, way of getting the responses these days, right? So I'm gonna get uh, the responses, the differences in a JSON format. So let's see if I could able to get that detail. And there you go look at that immediately the differences is just coming up over here it says that uh, there is an uh, header section uh, and there is a difference that uh, it says the first image contains a hello admin and log off uh, in the top right corner uh, while the second image has got the uh, register login instead so which means it basically says that there is a, a register and login link 
like this one instead of the hello admin and lock off. So that's the first change. And the second change, uh, unfortunately, it couldn't be able to tell you the second change. Like there is a change in the uh, in the employee details and manage user. Uh, rather, it just said that it, there is a change in the main content over here uh, and over here just coming up. It basically says that the, both the image contains the EA uh, employee version 2.0, but the footer contains version 3 in the about uh, section. So basically, it just says even, uh, it just goes even beyond and it just gets those information for you over there. So we don't really have to worry about that part, but we just need to get the differences. And the difference for first of them is very evident. And you may ask, like, Karthik, why didn't it really? told us the difference between the employee details and the manage user because it's sh it should supposed to be showing us that information it's not coming up over there well guess what because we are using the free version of the model so if we are using uh, the gpt4 uh, model it, the 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 comparison would be a bit more accurate or if you're using the four turbo it will be even more accurate maybe because we are not using the right model for doing this that's the reason why there is a difference between them but yes we can tune this model a bit uh like or maybe we can ask the question in a different way to get the responses but i will show you what is the other way that i can get the responses but before i go any further uh, i could see that this uh, json response that i'm getting in over here is not the response uh, that I really wanted to. I mean, I know that I wanted to have a JSON response, but if you ask the same question next time, the response of the JSON structure may be different from what you're looking for. So you remember in API testing, while we try to do it, we have something called as the uh, API schema. So basically, uh, if you ask what is this API schema, the API schema is like the metadata for your query. So it defines which API requests are valid based on several request property, uh, blah, blah, blah. But the, basically the schema in a nutshell is like a metadata uh, and the structure of how your uh, API should looks like. So if you have a schema of how you wanted to have this particular response, I have actually curated uh, a bit of a, a response structure, something like this. I wanted to have like this, like I want to have a name of what this particular response should be. So this is going to be the name section. So basically it's going to be any of the name section. And then I wanted to uh, uh, tell what is the difference in the uh, first image. Just give me all of them in an array. And if there is any uh, difference, the second image, like employee list, employee details, manage user, get me all those details in the second image array. And if there is any other change, just give me for the second one and similarly for the third one. So I, I need to have all these kind of schema structure in place. And that's the reason what I did is I ended up writing an entire schema, uh, something like this, as you can see over here. So let me just prettify that. So this is my schema. It's very straightforward and a simple schema. So I have gotten elements. And this is the name of that particular element, uh, like the structure. And then the first image and second image, like what are the changes it has got. And similarly, the second uh, name, like the category. And then I wanted to see the difference between the first one and the second image. So these are all the things that I have got. I want to ask based on this particular schema structure. So I'm going to go this time and I'm going to say, check all the differences one more time and give the give just the difference in the image in this json schema i'm going to paste that schema itself so basically it's more like a, a rag because we are now telling that this is the reference that you have to do to argument and get or generate the response that we are looking for so now you can see that the the Gen AI or the large language model is going to go and do that comparison for us. And it is going to give those details for us over here. Look at that. So easy. Now I can see that this is the schema structure that I wanted to like, like this is a name as header section. And this is the first image. Like what is the difference in the first image? It's an array structure. And this is the second image. And you can see that what is the changes. So basically you can have them all in this array structure. So this is the schema's power that we have got. And we can put all these schemas over here. And I mean, we can get all the responses out 
in this particular schema structure. And then now we can get this information within our test and understand how things work. So hope you got the idea like how it actually works in this entire way. So uh, now we can start making use of this this comparison because guess what because when i take the screenshot there is a difference between uh, the way i take the screenshot as well because it, the, the pixels over here may be different as you can see the width whereas the width in here may be different as well so if you take the screenshot from selenium it is going to be more straightforward because we used to use this get screenshot method to get the screenshot and then we pass it like a base64 image format that way the the loss of the screenshot cutting and the pixels won't be there at all so it's going to be more absolute by the time so we are going to see how we can achieve the same kind of operation that we just did manually in an code